Okay, my friends, another shocker today at Mud Fossil University. The Earth's core is not understood. The periodic table is wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's just nothing right in, in nuclear physics at all. Okay, my friends, they've discovered a giant magnetic wave that just crosses our Earth every seven years. And they had no idea about this. Now, let's, you see where it is here? It's crossing across the equator. That's where the impact zone is in the equator. Now, let's talk about what happens. It's a, it's a swarm reveals magnetic waves crossing across Earth. Now, just listen to what it has to say here. These, these waves, known as magneto-coriolis waves, are huge magnetic columns aligned along Earth's rotational axis, strongest at the equator. So that's where you're getting the most column push. They sweep around the boundary between the core and the mantle with an amplitude of around 3 kilometers, 1.86 miles per year, and move westward at a rate of up to 1,500 kilometers 932 miles per year. They have no idea about this three kilometers under the mantle. They, they have no idea what's under the ground at all. None. Zero. They don't even know what the ground's made of. They don't even know what molecules are made of. Atoms are made of. Nucleuses are made of. They have no idea about any of that. And I'm going to show you. I do. And right now, I am the only one on planet Earth that understands this. Yeah, take it for whatever you want. Laugh at me. <laughs> but you're going to find out it's true. And my old boss used to say, it ain't bragging if it's true. And it's true. Now, the existence of these waves suggests that other magneto-coriolis waves might exist with different oscillation periods, which we are unable to detect to date due to a lack of data. They don't look at the data. They just make assumptions. Okay, my friends, if you are a physicist, you're not going to be happy about this. There is nothing but tiny, tiny, tiny particles that fill the universe. Nothing other than muon and electron neutrinos. Let me show you. Okay, I'm just going to make this real simple. CERN, Mu, uh, CERN and Fermilab and all of them have seen muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos, and they have seen them turn into the muon stays a hard core and the electron turns into a shower, electron neutrino. Here it is right here. We did this. We proved that they're true. That's they're correct. However, they don't realize what they did. They proved that everything there is exists of only these two particles. There's a black one and a white one. Once again, CERN, I mean uh, Fermi Lab, Don Lincoln says that's the big black fixed particle, never changes. The white one is a squishy one. There they are right there, the big black one and the white one is a squishy one. He says even it has a little border around it. Yes, it does. Now, what happens when these things, these, this, this is light. These are po point particles of light, because that's the range I work in. These are light particles. These are not protons like they use at CERN. CERN, they smash things in just tight tons of garbage and then they dig through them and they say yeah well look what we found well we just we can see these all day long and we know where they came from because we made them come out of laser light this is nothing more than laser through a venturi when that particle which i just showed you right there is here that's light comes through the air like that when it hits the venturi the Venturi has a tiny, tiny, tiny slit right there. The white one's the only one that can get through, so the black ones have to go around. But what I have just shown and proven, I'm a material scientist. That means if I can't prove it with material, with evidence, I don't say talk about it, because it's not it's just, just nonsense. I can make up anything, wormholes and all that nonsense. It's just silly stuff. What do we really have? We have particles. And what are those particles? There's a black one and a white one. And what do they join together to make? Photons. And what is a photon? It's two of these particles back to back. A black and a white and a black and a white. Back to back, they make a photon. One individually is what we would call an electron. That's the electricity. And the only one that has any energy is the white one. The black one is just a bomber. But guess what? That's what's pushing our magnetic field around our Earth. Here's the sequence. The light comes out of the red laser. It bumps into all the particles that are in the air. And the space is saturated because these are nothing more than the same thing as light. 
Now we accelerated it. It's acceleration as far as I'm concerned. And then it exploded here and made fission and fusion. The holy grail of power. What was this particle? There it is right there, the one I showed you before, the black and white one. All right? And that, this is in the red. It's not very strong. They create the Higgs fields. They do all the things they say. All right, now, here's the photon right here. It's back here, too, but it doesn't have the same characteristics until it starts to stack up at the Venturi. Then we can see it very clearly. Then it explodes at the Venturi. But you see the particle we're dealing with. This is red. I'm going to show you what green looks like. That's what green looks like. It's exactly the same. It comes through and it shows itself as the green, but it's black and white particle in the green. And here it is up close and personnel. Boom. All right, exactly identical to the red and the blue and every other particle of light. Because light is a photon made of these particles, which is the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino, back to back, two of them. Each one of these is, a, is literally what we have always thought of was an electron. It's just we never knew the black was there. Nobody's ever seen it before. Nobody's ever seen it. They've seen it at CERN, but they just, didn't, they just see it in a pile of debris, and they say, wow, look at that little black thing. <laughs> All right, so my claim is they are particles. They have polarity. They have the black and the white, and they are different speeds. Is all it is. They're different speeds. The red is much slower than the green. Look at how powerful that green is compared to the red down here. And look at the red is doing barrel rolls instead of spin. It's supposed to spin like this. Instead, it's tumbling because the green has just driven it and pushed it down like that. Knocked it right down. All right, and then the green reappears out here, way out here, because it's just way more powerful than the red. And the blue is way more powerful than the green. So don't forget, it takes seven years for the Earth to charge up. And it, the field moves westward because we're spinning this way, and it's pushing the field this way. As the Earth spins, it literally pushes all of the field this way because the field is charging up the Earth. Okay, so can I prove that we're pushing the field? Yes. You see these little particles here? Those are particles that are being pushed and they're shoving back. This is glowing. These are glowing. This will keep charging up until it gets so charged up that it flips. Now, the Earth is just sort of moving its field this way. So not not as fast as these fig goes, vroom, just spin like crazy. The Earth is just gigantic, so it goes slower, but it still pushes the field back. And I'll show this happening in the green right now. You see this? This one's just getting ready to flip. Here it is, just before it charges fully. Here it's getting really fully charged. It's going to flip like that. Then the white one will come to the front, and this one will go to the back. Basically, the same thing is happening to the Earth. Now, by the way, the periodic table needs to be completely revamped. It's totally wrong because there is hydrogen is not one big, huge proton. It's 1839 of these particles here, electrons. All right, two of these is a photon. One of those is an electron. And everything here is wrong, 100% wrong now. The periods are correct. All they are is stabilization points of all of those particles shaking and bit until they lock in at a stable. Look at that. Look at my hand. I just had surgery. And they missed my vein. Anyway. All right. This is how they charge up. And our Earth going through all the particles in space, which is saturated with particles. Don't let me tell you it's a vacuum. It's not a vacuum by any means whatsoever. Even Don Lincoln at Fermilab says it's saturated with what he calls quantum foam, which is nothing more than light particles. Now, here they're coming through, smashing and charging. And now this one's getting ready to flip. You see how it's getting overcharged? That's what happens to the Earth. At a seven-year cycle, it gets overcharged and it just pushes the field around. Now, seeing that every particle is made of only those particles right there, which is called electron flood theory. All right? An electron flood is nothing more than this. An electron, which we always thought was an electron, is, is a dipole. It consists of an electron and a dark particle. The photon is two of them together. When they collide on impact, they divide. That's all it is. The bigger the ball turns into what we call atoms. 
All right? These are not just solid. Hydrogen is always H1, and it's 101 atomic mass unit. No, absolutely not. There's three types of hydrogens, and then there's all kinds of little particles in between, isotopes. So they're making up little bitty particles, make up these big particles. So this is completely wrong. Instead of, of um, carbon being um, the size that it is with like six, um, six protons and 12 all together because they throw in a bunch of neutrons because they can't figure out how to make it work, it's thousands and thousands of these particles. So the periodic chart has to be completely revamped. And I'm going to do it. I've already done it. It's very simple to do. Okay, here's what's going on. The Earth is spinning, all right? It's spinning this way. So the push is to the west. If we're spinning into a ton of particles that are out here, the push is to the west. They think something's going on inside the core. They have absolutely no idea whatsoever what's inside of our Earth. None. Zero. And it's just nothing but sheer incorrect speculation. All right, I'm just going to leave it at this. Carbon, they say, is six protons, and then the mass weight of it is 12.0107 because it has six neutrons thrown in because they don't know what to do with them. And then it has six little electrons. And this is what they think it looks like. Well, it's something like that, only it's, it's a ball of particles like this in the center. And the dark stuff of the center is towards the very inside, and these want to get to that dark, so they surround it, yes. So there is, these are the ones that do the attaching and bonding. These are the core, and it's made of like this. It's not just one six or twelve little balls. There's exactly, or approximately, 22,076 particles in the core. Not twelve. Okay, NASA agrees with me we need brand new physics because everything is wrong now. A NASA statement explains the cause of the discrepancy, which is the expansion of the universe and the Hubble Space Telescope. Totally wrong. It has no relevance whatsoever because there is not no just complete vacuum in space. Everywhere in space is loaded with particles, and it's not homogeneous. So you can't judge what's coming from where, how much it has to plow through. So some th places are going to be further away and look like they're closer, and some are going to be closer and look like they're further away. The NASA statement explains the cause of this discrepancy remains a mystery. Hubble data encompasses a variety of cosmic objects serve as distance markers, and they're all com completely wrong now. And it supports the idea that something weird is going on involving brand new physics, possibly. Yes, it does. The physics I just showed you.